Gulf countries and the United States have agreed to carry out joint patrols to stop any Iranian arms shipments reaching Yemen. The Gulf Cooperation Council's Secretary General announced the measure in a press conference with U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter. Saudi Arabia is leading the coalition that supports Yemeni forces in their year-long battle against Houthi rebels. Iran is allied with the Houthis but denies smuggling weapons to Yemen. President Obama has just landed in Riyadh to attend a summit of the GCC on Thursday. Before that, he's due to meet with King Salman. And let's hear from a perspective from Saudi Arabia now. Salman al-Ansari is a writer and political com commentator and joins us live from the capital, Riyadh. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, now, firstly, we just mentioned, of course, that, uh, uh, that uh, Obama has just arrived. And also, in the fact that the, he's working with Gulf countries to halt these shipments um, from Iran, how does this change the relationship with Saudi Arabia, given the fact that the nuclear deal has just come into effect. How is he going to balance these two relationships between Saudi and also Iran? Great, great question. Hi, uh, Sally, and hi to all the viewers of TRT World around the globe. Basically, we are coming, or President Obama has come today here in Riyadh in a very a significant time where we are facing a lot of challenges, not only the Middle East that is facing a lot of challenges, but the whole global security is facing a lot of challenges because there are a lot of uh, infiltration and a lot of involvement of the Iranian-backed militias in the region that have disturbed the harmony and the stability of the regions. That's something that needs to be stopped. And um, uh, Secretary Carter has just said, like 10 minutes ago, has said that they are very committed as the United States, very committed to work closely with the GCC to confront all the Iranian-backed militias in the region because it's something that is not considered to be a bearable kind of condition. And I think the United States is closer than any time before to really be taking such a stance because let's face the reality. We have seen the United States to be a little bit withdrawn from the region, specifically for the reason of wanting to imply and, and, um, and, and make the nuclear deal to be a successful story. But let's face the reality. The Iranian regime has done two times, has done the ballistic missiles um, uh, uh, test, and that's something that is violating the United Nations resolution 2231, which is something not to be uh, acceptable at all, not only by the regional powers, but also by the uh, um, award powers. But what we want from the United States is to be clear to its stances, to be clear, not to uh, uh, leave the region in such a chaotic situation. In Syria, they have put a lot of red lines, but they've never been committed to them. Okay, in Iraq, someone, they have been part of the involvement of the of, If of, I can just get in here, issues. sorry, so if think, I can just yeah. get in here, what about the fact that Riyadh is also a major threat for the region? What, are, what have you got to say that? Excuse me? Some, some would argue that Riyadh is also a threat to the region. What do you have to say, that, hey, say to that? Not, yeah, okay, when they, I think they would mean the, the Yemeni kind of situation. Let's face the reality. Saudi Arabia has managed to create a coalition of 10 Arab countries and supported globally to uh, uh, combat the Iranian-backed militias. So Saudi Arabia uh, needs to be uh, appreciated for its action to liberate this nation, one of the poorest countries in the world, Yemen. And guess what? It has been uh, having a resolution, a global resolution of 2216. So Saudi Arabia is working closely with the United Nations resolutions. It's not like Iran. Iran is infiltrating uh, in the Arab affairs by its militias. And it's something very obvious. And let's face the reality. Who is the global sponsor of terrorism? Iran. It's the country that has been uh, uh, going ahead and, and, and killing civilians and police officers all around uh, the GCC and the region. Let's not forget the fact that the Iranian regime is the one that was responsible for the killing of 19 American soldiers. Okay, in Salman, uh, just another question then. Just, just off it's the back of that, if I can just get in here. Off the back of that, what about other reports that Saudi Arabia also has links to jihadist groups in Syria? That has nothing to do with the truth. And let me tell you how and why. Saudi Arabia has been blamed before by the Russian government that it supports uh, 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 
um, a, a rebellions in Syria uh, without having an umbrella of moderate uh, groups. And that's they were saying that there is no moderate groups in Syria. So they were like killing civilians all over and the Russians was saying that they were trying to target Daesh and ISIS uh, militants, but it wasn't true. So Saudi managed to create an umbrella for all the opposition. And right now, they all agree that it's the right uh, 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 opposition party. Because why? Because it's moderate and it has nothing to do with ideological um, 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 ideas that would uh, uh, disclose or like um, uh, uh, get rid of all the other groups. It's more of a coalition or it's more of an opposition that is wanting to liberate the Syrian from its crisis. And let's face the reality. Okay. There is no solution for the Syrian crisis without getting rid of Bashar al-Assad because he was the one who was responsible for the killing of 300,000 people, civilians, and displaced okay. more than 12 million people. We are speaking of half of the Syrian population to be displaced. So okay. if there is any country that would one blame Saudi question. Arabia for anything, I think it's really absurd. Okay, yeah, ahead, so please. what about, obviously, a bill looming now in the US uh, with the fact that uh, the accusations that Saudi Arabia was involved in the 9-11 attacks. Is Saudi Arabia likely to make good on its threats to sell off US assets for any role in 9-11? If the bill goes through? Good, good question. Let's face the reality when it comes to this case. First of all, the congressional report of the 1833, 833 pages said Saudi Arabia is not guilty. It's innocent and it has nothing to do with 9-11. The 9-11 Commission report, which is 470 pages, said the same thing. The CIA report said the same thing. The, 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 the Federal Court of the US in 2009 said the same thing. So there is nothing anyone can put, there's no one can put the Saudi Arabia uh, uh, as a government uh, to be responsible for any action or for any uh, relationship for the 9/11. That's for sure. But the issue with the with the with the law with the, with the law that has been discussed in the Congress is that it will uh, lift up the immunity from all governments. It's not only about Saudi, and that's not something uh, to be working along with the best practices when it comes to the diplomatic arena. So that's why Saudi Arabia will not allow such action to come smoothly. Why? Because that would make the American uh, citizens okay. to All be right. able to sue foreign thank you, governments, Salman. To I'm sue sorry, foreign I'm governments have to without having there. enough evidence. I do evidence. apologize. Okay, yeah. thank you very much for your contributions today. Salman Al-Ansari there from Riyadh.